in the preface to the whole Shah Name, uh, Ferdowsi says, the Guftar Hegambarat Rahju, Delas Tiriya in Abshu. Chegoft on Kodavand Tanzil of Akia, Kodavand Am, Kodavand Nakia. Keman Shah Vestonan, Aliam Daras, Dros in Sahon, Gofte Hegambaras. That's the evidence. Does that mean for us that he uh, had a special feeling about the so-called Holy Family, Ali, the next generation member of the family, or does it mean that he was uh, a, a Shiite by faith and by practice? That leads us to another issue with respect to Ferdowsi. One of those questions that we examine when we study Ferdowsi, uh, what sort of a man was he? You recognize that in your tradition of Persian literature, it helps your appreciation of the poet, your appreciation of poems of a poet, if you can think that the poet was better than the rest of us. To stop and think of the poets who were in the top rank of Persian poetry, and generally we find in them characters above the ordinary, above the usual expectations for people. In the case of Ferdowsi, over the centuries, uh, Iranians and others have created a sort of perfect man out of Ferdowsi. We have the story of his uh, spending 30 years uh, in great toil to produce this uh, Shahnameh, of his not getting his due from the people who should have supported him, of his uh, having to flee his hometown out of fear of Mahmoud of Ghazneh, of his writing a famous satire about Mahmoud of, uh, uh, of Ghazneh. What are the facts? The fact is that these stories tell us a lot about Iranian culture and are valuable stories. The second fact is we have no evidence for the stories. The reports basically uh, derive from the Chahar Mabali by Nezami uh, Samar Gandhi or Abuzi, and he didn't have first-hand evidence. He was writing down what he had heard. If we read uh, the best biographies of Fair to see in English, Jalal Khalabi Mothlad's article in Encyclopedia uh, Ironic Online, or uh, Mr. Shah Aziz's uh, Fair to see critical biography, we discover that they can't read which any conclusion about who Fair to see was. My answer to this outside of Iranian culture is would it be less fun for me to read Shah Hamid's stories if the Shah Hamid were anonymous, if we didn't even know who wrote it? In one sense, the poems would, would be the same. It'd be nice if we knew a lot about Ferdowsi, but we don't seem to. The next issue is, we've all read pieces of the Shah Hamed, although I will say, when I talk to uh, many educated Iranians about the Shah Hamed and ask them what they think about this or that, their answers imply for me that they haven't really read the whole Shah Hamed, which is not a crime not to have. Uh, that they've heard stories as children, they've read a few stories, but after the time of Alexander of Sekandad, Iskandad, uh, except for the uh, reign of Ardashir, perhaps, the story of Khosrow and Shirin, and the, the ending story of Yazdegerd III, uh, they're not really clear about what's going on uh, in the Shah Mameh. And if you ask people, what basically is the Shah Mameh about? Uh, it's difficult for them to say. In fact, they'll say things that relate more to people like Rostam and Siavash and Eskandiyar than to what Ferdowsi says his subject uh, really was. Um, where do we have our next uh, volunteer reader? Safon Gui Dehkan Chiguyat Nofos, the Taja Buzurgi, the Giti Kejos. چه بود آن که دیهیم بر سر نهار ندارد کس آن روزگار یا اگر که در یاد دارد پسر بگوید تو را یک یک قدر که نام بزرگی که آورد پیش که را بود از آن مهتران مایه پیش چون این گفت کاین تخت و کلا یومت آورد او بود شا and the last words of the Shah Hamid sort of verify this. Ferdowsi saw himself 
as writing the history of kings of the world. His world was an Iranian world. So it became kings of Iran as well, but kings of Iran were kings of the world. But the story is about kingship. This is not all that comfortable for all readers of the Shah Muhammad today because, today because they spent most of the 20th century chafing at the monarchical bit and hoping that there might be another kind of system uh, for uh, their culture and country. But if we can appreciate kings as representing in a sort of fiction, in stories, Iranian qualities, that we enjoy their successes, that we feel sadness when things uh, go poorly for them, uh, it doesn't imply any connection between us and views about kingship as a, a, a political choice. And that brings uh, to mind the issue of Mahmoud of Aznet, about whom in the course of the Shah Nameh, Firdosi has perhaps 200 dates of uh, fulsome praise. He starts his praise in the preface to the Shah Nameh with 40 or 50 couples praising uh, Mahmoud, and they begin this way. Bedin nami man dasbordan faraz, bedin nami shahen shahe, gardan faraz, khudaban khaj, khudaban de taht, jahan daro, bidar, piruz bakht, jahan afarin ta, jahan afarin, chano shahriyari, nayamad hadid. Did Ferdosid mean these statements? It doesn't matter whether he meant them or not. They're in the text, they become part of the texture of the story. And at the end of those 50 couplets about uh, Mahmoud, he says, Kanun Bazgardan Ba Azakar, Suya Nam Var Namiya Shahriyan. He recognizes the connection. The connection is between a real king who is there with power today, good or bad, in fact, is, a, is not relevant, but he's there, and his story, which he presents here as a story of kings and kingship. Another issue. Is Ferdowsi Shah Mehmed primarily storytelling, history, a mirror for princes, a guide to living, testimony to cultural nationalism, cultural identity, or something else? If we pay attention to what Ferdowsi himself says in his text, we'll reach the conclusion that Ferdowsi thought of his text as versified history. History of the world, but that had history uh, of Iran, the center of that world. And then finally, what is the most critically appealing feature or aspect of uh, the Shah Nami? The stories, Ferdowsi's advice, his worldview, the cultural nationalism in the text. For me, as a person who, as they say, uh, in several realms, uh, does not have a horse in this race, that is for me personally, culturally, ethnically, linguistically, Ferdowsi is another writer of poetry, not somebody who represents uh, what I might be uh, culturally. So I'm less likely to enjoy Ferdowsi because of a cultural orientation in it. I'm also a modern person, as we all are, so I'm not going to drive any more inspiration from Ferdowsi than I am from Shakespeare, in a sense. That is, those um, arenas and areas in which Ferdowsi presents pre-modern notions as interesting and exciting as they are, they might not be the notions that would motivate me. But from when I first got exposed to Ferdowsi in Mashhad uh, years ago, uh, something about him seemed more important than meaning, more important than culture. And it was just the words. And ultimately it may be that for critics, literary critics, what makes Ferdowsi special, what makes him survive, is poetry, is speech that becomes poetic. Ferdowsi can show us things and not tell us things. 